This review, this recap, I'm telling you right now, it's going to be very short. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel. We have reached another recap. Yes, I'm doing it early because I don't want to be doing this all Saturday. I got plans. I got stuff to do. Okay. Even if those plans are just laying in my bed and watching television. I hope you guys had a wonderful week. We are finally at the freaking weekend. I am so excited. Okay. So let's just get right into this recap. The scene starts with Emily and Chloe for some odd reason. Now all of a sudden, I guess they're besties. They need to be walking, having a little light conversation. When I tell you guys that I am so fed up with this show, I I'm probably never going to review the show again on my channel. I Chloe says that they were accused of being inauthentic. Emily says that Dr. Pia isn't just going to say something to say something. You know, if she brought that up, it's because she saw something in you guys. And basically, Dr. Pia wants the best for them. Chloe's really pissed off about that, by the way. She mentions that at least three or I, I think it was about three times that she mentioned the inauthenticity and it, it really freaking bothered her. It bothered you because it's the truth. And Chloe says finding the truth is a very hard pill to swallow. <sighs> Why is Claire still on my screen? Can anyone tell me? Put it in comment section. Okay. Anyway, Claire is still fixated on Cameron. Cameron ain't paying her no freaking mind. It happens to be his birthday that day. And even though he ghosted her, has not spoken to her, had nothing but bad things to say to her face in that group situation, she had the nerve to text him for his birthday. That fool wouldn't have got a text from me. He wouldn't have gotten a text from me. In fact, I would hope that you'd crawl back up in your mama, but that ain't possible. Okay, Claire, it's time for you to move on. I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of him. Becca is happy being back in her safe space. And she reflects on her breakup with Austin. And she basically feels like, you know, she's going through a breakup period right now. And uh, she gets on a video chat with her mom and she basically is seeking validation from her mom. And, you know, Becca takes responsibility for her own actions and she wants to look into what her part was in the situation feeling. But, you know, Becca's mom says, you know, despite however you're feeling, it would have happened eventually. Uh, her mom lets her know that trust is very important in a relationship but she didn't make a mistake when she ended the situation. Okay, so Lauren ended the friendship with Orion after... Um, you know, going out with him on that little sports situation. Lauren sent that fool a text message that she didn't want to have a friendship with him anymore. And all he could do in response was send a thumbs up emoji. Oh, Ryan is trying to act all hurt. Like he's really trying to act hurt and reject it. But all he had to say was a thumbs up emoji. Oh, Ryan, get the hell out of here and get off my screen. So Austin came to box with Michael and... I'm not even going to talk about these formulated get togethers anymore. So Austin opens up to Michael about basically how he's been depressed and he's been going through it post breakup and he's hoping for closure, but he's very uncertain about the future with Becca. So Emily is here with her friend, China. You mean as in, no, it's actually not China. It's Gina. She just spells it weird. Alrighty then, lady. Emily is planning, uh, she's planned a trip to Hawaii and Vietnam. And um, this trip is going to be what helps her to heal after the divorce. And she says that she's learned a lot of lessons from this failed marriage. So Chloe comes in the house and this next part, I want you to pay close attention to what Michael says to Chloe. Oh, hi guys. You don't even like them. Why are you, fa why are you faking? <laughs> oh, get out of here. You don't even like them. Get out of here. Don't let her poison you, Mello. She doesn't even like you. She doesn't even like you. Well, that was quite strange. So Chloe addresses the fact that Michael's mom does not know about their marriage. And she brings up the fact that his mom was relieved when the other bride backed out. And of course, Michael is over here and he's like, you know, once we know that our relationship is progressing, then you get to meet her, you know, just basically saying anything to pacify her. Because honestly, I don't think he has any intention on staying with Chloe and vice versa. So Chloe tells Michael that, you know, she was basically reflecting on what Dr. Pia had to say. She mentions to Michael that, you know, the fact that he hasn't told his mom is concerning to her. 
and that she feels it would be a disservice to his mom and their relationship for him to like bring her in like at the end. Michael then suggests focusing on their relationship's growth before involving his mom, which another to me is a red flag. It's a red flag. You already doubting the relationship. She's not going to meet your mom until after decision day. I have never in the history of Married at First Sight ever seen anyone ever say that. Chloe is very, I told you earlier, Chloe is very upset about this inauthenticity accusation. I feel like every time we have a review, it's always a word that they overdo. I'm really sorry. And then, like I just said, he was like, you know, let's focus on us. Let's focus on the relationship. And then, and maybe then you will meet her. So Chloe wonders about their living situation post decision day. But Michael expresses doubts about finding a suitable place for all them damn animals. Okay, who the hell, what landlord you know gonna want, gonna want five animals in their house? They barely want my cat in here, okay? Which is really, really stupid because you have, literally people have dogs. The people upstairs before they left, they had two dogs. And these ones downstairs got a dog. And you have a problem with my beautiful freaking cat, my cat princess? Are you crazy? Oh, sorry, got sidetracked, sorry, sorry. Okay, um, the both of them plan to see what options they have after decision day and that's what going to run into them actually going and looking claire i don't give a f what you talking about right now let's move on and now michael talking to lion ass brennan and brennan had the nerve to tell michael that he needs to communicate his feelings about how he feels uncertain in the relationship with chloe brennan of all people is suggesting open communication that's interesting now chloe and michael are looking at this apartment they know damn well they're not going to rent and chloe if i'm not mistaken didn't michael have that shirt on either last week or so or am i just seeing things is that shirt even clean i'm just saying so michael is still making excuses as to why this place wouldn't work even though it has an extra bedroom he doesn't want them to compromise you know what i think you're compromising your true feelings you really don't want to be in this that's why you have so much doubt buddy Michael pretty much says that he is struggling with his doubts emotionally and he is doubting the staying married part and what that means for his life, okay? Michael admits that he's actually felt drained at times and Chloe asks him straight up, Michael, are you ready to be married? Michael admits to questioning their union. He has questions, okay? He's not certain. And that really jolts Chloe for a minute and she has to really take a step back because she's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't expect him to say that. So Chloe says that maybe the rushing them to live together may have caused doubts in him. And Michael, you know, lets her know, you know, that he's uncertain, but believes that they both need time to find answers. Chloe is very emotional throughout this whole scene. I cannot gauge whether she's being a liar or not. So I guess that's a good thing. She makes Michael promise not to make any type of decision until decision day. I thought we were done with the night outs, but I guess we're not. Girls night out. They're at a drag place, a drag, um, a drag queen club or whatever. That's where the title of the show comes in. And of course, the guys have to be over here doing their thing. And um, they're doing some kind of metal work, like they're sticking metal in this hot thing and molding things. I wasn't really paying attention because I don't care about any of these guys, truthfully, if I'm being completely honest. I already talked about this, but this is the last scene of the entire show. This is when Michael was telling Chloe that he is not sure about this marriage, okay? And that's really the end of this recap. And that is all for the recap. I told you guys it would be short and sweet. Thank you very much. Anyway, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and i'll talk to you guys in the next video bye